There are five huge changes coming to Spokane, Washington in the coming years that I wanna tell you about because they could affect your move here to the area positively or negatively, and I'd love to help you prepare for those or take advantage of them. So let's jump right into this video. All right, so the first two have to do with transportation, which is going to be a huge thing for you if you move here. And as more people are moving here to Spokane, the traffic is getting worse and worse, but nothing like what you're experiencing over in Seattle, LA, or any of those other big cities. So first up on the list is the growth of the Spokane International Airport. The Spokane Airport is going through an expansion phase right now that is going to open up a Concourse C or expand Concourse C, which uh, I don't even think I've ever flown out of Concourse C. I don't know who does, because it's not really anything right now, but uh, as far as I can tell. But as you can see on the screen, there's 144,000 square foot expansion costing $150 million that will add three more gates to Concourse C and an additional ticket booth area for the airlines that are over there. I know from my experience at the airport recently, this will be great to kind of split up some of the traffic and have multiple ticket booth areas and or TSA areas because our TSA area has been getting super backed up in Spokane recently. Some of the, sometimes the line goes the entire length of the airport and out into the parking lot which has just been insane. And I think mostly it's because of a staffing issue. So even though they are making this expansion, hopefully they're going through a massive round of hiring to make it so that this is actually effective. With the expansion of Concourse C, the great thing is that it'll add roughly 1,200 jobs to the area, 87 million in household revenue, and 313 million in economic activity to Washington State as a whole. And then hopefully this will allow for a few more direct flights across the country, because I know some of my viewers from the East Coast are struggling with the move because there are uh, basically no direct flights from Spokane to the East Coast. You're gonna be stopping in Minneapolis, Denver, Salt Lake, something like that to make a layover. But I'm just excited to see some modernization of the Spokane Airport. Concourse C will be a lot more modern. And then in future phases, they plan on updating Concourse A and B and then making a central hall, which is much more common uh, in other larger airports where there's like a large grand entrance, huge TSA lines spread out really wide um, across the entire airport that will just help the flow of the TSA traffic. It'll just be very airy and bright and have lots of windows and it will just bring the modernization to the Spokane airport that we desperately need. So Concourse C is supposed to be finished in 2025. There is no date yet for uh, the updates of A, B and the Central Hall area, but having Concourse C, having additional gates at the Spokane airport will be greatly appreciated appreciated by those of you that are going to be traveling a lot after your move here. So the next big change for Spokane is the North-South Freeway. Now this isn't major news or, or new news because we've been working on the North-South Freeway for over 20 years, but it is coming close to an end. The finish line is here. At the beginning of this year, we did have a little speed bump where some of our funding from the state was pulled by Governor Jay Inslee because they had a lack of funds in certain accounts and there were massive petitions to make sure that the North-South Freeway was completed because uh, if they didn't get that funding, they're gonna push the timeline off to 2035, but now they're seeing a deadline of 2030, possibly sooner. But what this means for you moving to Spokane, especially if you're looking for to live north of Spokane, or maybe you just want some land in North Spokane, but you're gonna be working out in the valley or something like that. This is just gonna allow for a lot more accessibility to I-90 and make it more feasible to live north of Spokane in Deer Park and Chatteroy and Colbert and beyond, but also be working out at Fairchild Air Force Base or in Liberty Lake or even in Post Falls and make your drive time so much less because you won't have to drive down Division where there's 29 intersections between the end of Highway 395 and the start of 190. So the North-South Freeway is complete from 395 all the way down to Hilliard. So you can take, you can be up in Deer Park or on Highway 2 and take uh, the North-South Freeway until you get to the Freya exit at Hilliard. But what it will do is continue to follow the train tracks through Hilliard, down through the Logan neighborhood. And where they are now is at the Spokane Community College where they're working on the Sky Bridge, which is going to be a two mile, 66 foot tall freeway that just goes over the Spokane River, over the industrial park, and over some of the neighborhoods in East uh, East Central Spokane until it connects with I-90 near the Thor and Freya exit or the existing site of Camp Hope right now. So current projections are that it's going to be done in 2030 and they're gonna begin breaking ground in two years on making all the on and off ramps uh, because it's going to be a massive, massive on and off ramp system to connect these two freeways to each other. 
All right, and speaking of living up north and having access to the North-South Freeway being easier to I-90, we're gonna talk about a new community that has yet to break ground. This is a new Greenstone community, which Greenstone is a massively popular builder here in Spokane. They've built out North Liberty Lake, they've built out Kendall Yards, they've built out the River District and Liberty Lake, or North Liberty Lake as we're calling it now. They're building out the Garden District up on the South Hill that I recently mentioned in one of my videos about new construction up there. But the next massive community that they are going to be building is called Mead Works. So Greenstone bought 300 plus acres off of the old Kaiser aluminum plant up in the Mead neighborhood. And this new town center is gonna be very reminiscent of Kendall Yards, but they're gonna be building up to 1,400 living units, including single family homes, multifamily, apartment buildings, 55 plus housing, townhomes, office, and retail. So it's really going to just be a combination of the River District and Liberty Lake and Kendall Yards and bringing some vibrancy up to North Spokane and Mead. This sits right in between the Newport Highway and the North Spokane Corridor, or the North South Freeway, as I was just mentioning. It'll be right behind the North Costco up there. And the great thing about Greenstone is that they always plan these communities around tons of green space and having parks and walking trails. And so this is going to be an absolutely wonderful built, like place to live. So I am on the interest list and I'd love to keep you up to date on it. So if you are interested in the future of this development, then just call, text, email me, and I'd love to get you that information. And next up, Spokane is really stepping up its game by getting a United Soccer League men and women's team here for Spokane. So we're currently building out a massive soccer stadium in downtown Spokane, right across the street from the Spokane Arena. Spokane will be one of eight franchises to be in the USL Super League, meaning that we have both a men's and women's team. So I think this is going to be massive for Spokane tourism, the community as a whole, as we already have a massive following for our minor league teams, like the Spokane Chiefs and the Spokane Indians, hockey and baseball respectively. So I I am very excited to have actually professional sports here in Spokane. And who knows, with the addition of the podium and now the soccer stadium, maybe we'll see a Summer Olympics here in Spokane in the future. I know we'd have a lot more to do before that could happen, but maybe we'll see it happen. And the last one really isn't a massive change that's coming soon, but really a celebration of the change that has happened here in Spokane. Spokane really got put on the map as a destination as a place people should go when we had Expo 74. It was the World's Fair in 1974 hosted here in Spokane, Washington. At that time, that's when Riverfront Park really became what it is today. It started out as just a train yard. Our clock tower was the clock tower for the train station and Spokane was just a stop along the railroad tracks from Seattle to Chicago. And so next year we get to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Expo 74. There will be a month-long event between May and June of 2024, celebrating all that Spokane has done over that 50 years. Uh, tourism in Spokane has really grown. Last year, there was $1.4 billion spent on tourism, which uh, is still catching up from our peak high in 2019 but after the pandemic. And so I think that tourism in Spokane and the growth of the city is still young and they have some really exciting things that are going to happen for that. Like the Gorge Loop Trail, which is a relatively new park that is right next to the Monroe Street Bridge, right off of the Spokane, uh, the Central Library downtown, looks over the falls. Uh, they're gonna add an extension to that that allows you to walk underneath the Monroe Street Bridge and down into the gorge there. And then they've also talked about putting a zip line there that with zip line underneath the Monroe Street Bridge down into People's Park in Peaceful Valley. So if you're moving here within the next year, you're going to celebrate the history of Spokane and the growth that we have had over the last 50 years, because as you can see, there's a lot of infrastructure changes going on that will affect you in a positive way when you make the move here to Spokane. And if you are making a move here to Spokane, I'd love to be your real estate resource. My name is Hayden Halstead, realtor here in Spokane, Washington. Call, text, email anytime, or use the link down below in the description to schedule a time on my calendar at a time that's convenient for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.